it's Emily from Life So Savory and today I'm going to be sewing my twirly dress pattern but we're going to be changing it up a little bit and making it more spring-like by shortening the sleeves, two short sleeves, and creating a fun flutter, flutter sleeve effect. So that's what we're going to be doing today. I hope you will stick around and join the show and check out what we're going to be doing. So I'm going to go ahead and just um, get a couple things done here and then we'll go ahead and start sewing. So I have already um, cut out my pattern pieces, but you can see the link to the pattern in the description of this video. The free flutter dress comes in sizes 12 months through 14 years and as my daughter grows I'm slowly sewing my way through the sizes so the pictures that you will see of her in the post I think she's probably wearing size 18 months or 2t and I just cut out the six for her today but I'm lengthening it so I'm going to show you um, how I'm doing that as well so that's what we're going to be doing today. I hope you will join me and I'm excited that you're here watching. So I'm just gonna go ahead and um, do a couple of shares. Um, so tell me what's going on with you. What are you guys up to today? We have a beautiful sunny day here but it is supposed to snow later, so that does not make me very happy. Um, I mean, the fact that it will be, it'll just be cold, um, but we'll do our best, so. Um, so that's, that's what's here. We have my son, who's in sixth grade, um, has three basketball games this week. So uh, in the afternoons, I'm being a basketball mom. And uh, let's see, why will that not let me share? Um, so that's fun. So, you know, only two parents are allowed. So I can't bring the other kids and, you know, everyone's wearing masks and there's hardly anyone there. And, um, you know, so it's really simple, but it's been so fun to see him play. And I appreciate that they're getting the chance to do that. So that is also part of our week. And every once in a while, the sixth grade team has what I call a moment where they actually look like they know what they're doing and um but they're having a lot of fun playing basketball so um we don't have a game today which is great so i'm just getting things done here at home and i'm super excited so i have wanted to sew a short sleeve version of this dress probably for five years since i originally created it and every warm weather season spring passes me by and I just haven't done it. So today is the day and you guys get to be here and be part of it. We are going to sew a short sleeve version of the twirly dress and I'm so excited that you guys are here to join me. So again, the free version of the, the free pattern is linked um, in the description of this video so you can go ahead and check that out there. And then um, I'm going to be adding the flutter sleeve hack, which is um, a hack that you can add to sh a short sleeve. And um, I've linked that tutorial as well, because you can really create that hack on any um, short sleeve t-shirt or dress that you want. So we'll see how it is going to look today um, on this. So let me show you what I have cut out and um, we'll go from there. So. I cut out and I'm repurposing some of this some fabric so it's got some other sew lines on it but I'm once I wash it they'll be fine um, so I cut out two sleeves 
okay? And I actually already, because I wanted to try it, added the flutter effect to the bottom of this one. So you can see how cute that is. It's a more full sleeve. So I did some, I took the sleeve pattern um, for this dress and I put three slashes in it and I did a little slash and spread on this short sleeve version and then I fluttered the bottom. So I'll show you how I'm going to flutter the bottom on this one uh, when we get to that step. And then actually on Friday, I'm gonna post the whole, tu whole tutorial for the slash and spread, but you can also get the general idea um, by clicking the flutter sleeve tutorial that's already linked in this post. Okay, so you can check that out. So two sleeves, we have a back yoke of this cute polka dot. I have a neckband also of the polka dot. I have a hood cut from um, the pink that I'm using today. I'm just using a com combination. I had a half yard of the pink, which wasn't enough really to, to sew this dress. Um, so I'm adding some of this polka dot. I, don't, I think it's a shirt I cut up. I don't know. It's, it's uh, nothing that I had a lot of yardage of. Here's the back, so the bottom of the back. So we'll be gathering this to match that yoke. And you can see I cut the pink of the original length of the pattern and then I added four inches um, of this green and cream polka dot to the bottom. So that's what I had of the fabric. So I'm adding four inches of length um, to make it a little bit longer because making it short sleeve I don't know if she'll be wearing it with leggings and then I don't want it to be too short of a dress. So lengthening it from a tunic to more of a dress length by adding four inches um, to the back. And then here's the front and you can also see I've already added that four inches to the bottom. And then here's the front piece and we'll need to do some sewing on there to get that ready to go as well. So those are the pieces and I cut those using the pattern pieces that um, are free printable and again that link is in the description of this video so you can go ahead and check out the photos and I will probably be adding some photos of this new version to that original post um, just to show how cute it is and on a growing child because in that post she is tiny and also I will say if you have a daughter who is on the older range or a niece or a friend on the older range of this pattern i've put this call out before and i haven't really gotten any response but if you would like to sew a larger version of this twirly dress and take pictures and send them to me i would love to um, pay you for those pictures in exchange so i could add them to that post and just show more of a range of sizes of the twirly dress so i would love to do that so um, email me or message me on Facebook or um, get a hold of me. <laughs> the contact page on my website, Life So Savory, you can use the contact me page there um, to go ahead and send me a message if you'd like to do that. So I would love to have a few more pictures um, of those larger sizes. So the size six and up because I've sewed the smaller sizes. I've sewed the larger sizes, but it's been a long time and I don't have pictures of those. So, okay, enough of that. On to sewing, let me grab my clips, my little scissors, and we are going to head right over here to sew and um, get on with the next step. Okay, so just want to make sure you can see what I'm doing. Um, okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take the front, which has these little cutouts in it. And what that is, is we need to gather this bottom that's a little bit longer to match the top and then sew it together. So it's just a little side pleat, um, but it also adds some gathering, which is, um, I think, a super cute detail of this dress. So um, sometimes I add clear elastic in this seam for gathering, but what I was thinking today was I'm just gonna try to sew it without the clear elastic and really see if it makes a big difference. Um, Cause I haven't tried it without, so why not? Let's try something new. All right, I'm just gonna run a single 
gathering stitch, which is just a normal straight stitch set at the longest length, which on my machine is five. So run that gathering stitch along the bottom there that was the short or the longer side. Tie off this one side. And we're really just trying to gather it to match the top, which is slightly shorter. I was thinking today of maybe making this part that I gather longer, but I didn't want to fool with the shape today, so I didn't. But it would be fun, I think, to have even more gathers right here on the side. All right, so once these match, like mine do, then I'm going to go ahead and just place a quick clip and then we're going to run that same gathering stitch. And I may be putting that gathering stitch a fourth of an inch from the edge of the fabric because I want it to be in the seam when I sew this top and bottom together. And normally I use the automatic thread cutter on this machine, but I want those long tails here to be able to pull together, so I'm cutting those myself. So like I said, if you are looking at the, tutor the written tutorial, you'll see that I use clear elastic, which I love using, to gather this part in the original tutorial. So I'm just trying a slightly different technique to gather this to see if, it, if the clear elastic really did make a difference in this seam or not. Okay, so now that these are matched, I'm going to go ahead and sew with my serger to attach that top and bottom together. want to make sure you sew all the way to the point so that you don't have a hole but you can see isn't that so I think that is such a cute little detail on this side of this dress love it every time okay so there's one side let me go ahead and sew the other I am sewing for reference from the outside the side seam of the dress towards the point of the pleat. So if you were wondering which direction I'm sewing, that's what I'm doing. And then when I get to that point of the pleat, I'm just easing off, although I see right there, I just eased off a little early and left a hole. So just like I said, don't do it. Don't leave a hole. No one, no one wants a hole in your dress. Okay, and then one of those gathering threads is right there. But here is now the front piece of this dress. And you can see by the um, shoulders that this is a raglan style, which I also think is really cute. But there's the front um, as is, okay? So now we've got the front. <clears throat> so the next step is to create the back. So like I said, we have this bottom and it is way wider than the top yoke. Let me find that top yoke piece. Okay, this has a seam down the center only because the fabric I was using wasn't big enough. And like I said, it's a shirt or something that I cut up a, a while ago. So. Um, what we want to do now is we want to gather this back piece, gather it up so that it matches the width of this yoke piece, all right? And then the back will be complete once we sew that together. So let's again run a gathering stitch across the top. Of this back piece. It's just, I'm just using a single straight stitch stitch set at a length of five, which is the longest length that I can do it. And that just makes for a really simple gathering stitch. If your fabric 
is thicker or you think is going to be tricky to gather, you might want to run two stitches to avoid breaking. But if you think one is enough, I like to keep it simple. So now I'm going to pull the bobbin thread to gather. And then we'll go ahead and pull from the other side. And then just run those gathers towards the middle. This pink is a double brushed poly, so it's really soft and has a great drape. The green fabric is like a cut up t-shirt, so it's more of a traditional t-shirt knit, knit, which is more of a two-way stretch instead of a four-way stretch. So I'm combining those fabrics. We'll, we'll see how it works out, but that's what we're starting with. All right, so I want to see if my little back top yoke matches my front. Not quite yet, but I'm getting really close. So I'm going to tie off this end so that I can play around with these gathers more and not have them go off. Um, this is something that I think I am not very good at, which is creating even gathers by hand, which is why I often will choose to gather with my serger because they're more even. So, I don't know, we can't be good at everything, right? That's what I tell myself. <laughs> okay, so once your gathers meet your approval for evenness, with right sides together, I'm going to clip the top yoke to the bottom skirt. Anybody here watch um, yesterday's live show on the brother? I did a live show on the brother um, Facebook page yesterday with Angela Wolf and I always I do that once a month and I always have so much fun doing it with her it's great to have two people one person's watching the comments okay let me see yay Megan I'm glad that you like this yeah this is so You'll see on the original, when you check out the original photos, but the original length, it is more like a tunic length, probably. My daughter's actually wearing a long sleeve version of this today at school uh, with leggings. So um, I'm trying this um, lengthening by four inches to see if it's more of a dress length. Like I'm hoping it will be uh, close to hitting her knees rather than, you know, mid thigh. So we'll see and I can report back on the length and I'll be posting pictures of this, like I said, on Friday. Um, so you can see what you think about the length too. But if you, yeah, if you want it for a dress without leggings, I would definitely maybe add length. But you can also measure the pattern pieces against your child. Um, you know, the original, po the original pattern has long sleeves, so when it's, colder weather, you're probably wearing something on your legs. So I feel like the length isn't quite as important as in, in the summer if you have bare legs or are wearing shorts. So that's just a small commentary on the <laughs> length of this, but I'll report back. So, all right, there is now the back put together. I really love these fabrics together. Okay, so we have the polka dot, and then this is like a sweater print, but in double brush poly and light pink, I think it works for spring. Okay, so there's the back. We now have the front. And so we're gonna sew our sleeves on, but before we do that, I want to flutter the end of this one. Actually, before I do that, I'm gonna sew the hood really quick here. So I'm gonna place the right sides together. And I've done this with a lined hood 
but I did not have enough fabric today. Um, so we're just going to hem the hood. And I think that is the way I did it on the original instructions. But the last version I made for my daughter had a lined hood and that is really cute too. Cause um, you kind of see the cute fabric when it's hanging down her back. I, I like lined hoods, but um, totally don't have to. And if you don't have enough fabric to cut four, like me today, then we'll just do a regular unlined hood and we'll hem the edge. All right, so I'm sewing these two layers together around the curve of the hood. And then at some point here, I will need to hem this hood before we um, sew it on. So we'll get to that too. Okay, so to create this fluttered edge like I have on this one, okay, you can see this one is already has a cute, it's a flutter sleeve or a lettuce hem. Um, I think that's how it's called. So when my mom was sewing for me, she had such a hard time getting nice hems that she would almost always just do them like this when she was sewing with knit because then she didn't have to worry about it laying flat or it's it or stretching. It's just already stretched out and fluttery for you. So you are going to want to set a zigzag. I set the length at 0.8 this morning, but then you want to make it narrow. So the width is I'm going to put at 2.0 and the length I'm putting at 0.8, okay? So it's narrow, but pretty close together. So we wanna put the bottom edge of our sleeve on under the machine, and you really wanna sew at the very edge of the fabric. We're not folding it over, we're not folding it under, we're simply running that zigzag along the raw edge. And what we wanna do, after you get started a little bit, is start pulling that knit fabric. And as you pull the knit fabric, thanks Mary, as you pull that knit fabric and stretch it, you will also be creating that fluttered edge or um, the lettuce edge. So let's take a look and um, see, how's it, see how it's going. Okay, so the first little bit, I'm kind of pulling from the side, but then as it gets, going, then I'll put my hand to the back and stretch it with my back hand, my front hand. I'll try to do it with these hands so you can see better. Okay, so you really want to try and stretch that knit fabric to get it to sort of curl up a little bit. And the more you stretch it, then really the longer your hem edge is, which will create more of that lettuce flutter effect. And then the zigzag itself is what finishes the edge of the fabric. And so then we don't have to hem it. I suppose you could also do this on your serger with a rolled hem where you pull um, pull the fabric of the rolled hem. All right. So let's see how we did, which is a little fluttery hem here, okay? So now we have two flutter hems that look lovely. And we're going to pin the sleeves to the front and back. I'm gonna start by pinning the sleeves to the back. Hi, Nancy. All right, so we're gonna pin the sleeves to the back. So I, um, this raglan does have a difference for the front and back. So I had put a pin on the back 
side of my sleeve shoulder. So I'm able to then match that up. So we'll put the back of the sleeve with the back of the dress and then match from the top down to the underarm and then we'll do the same on the other one so my side with the pin is the back and these are you know they both have a slight curve to them and sometimes the curves play nicely and sometimes the curves, you know, are a little awkward. So you might have to ease the shapes together, but go ahead and do that to pin the sleeves to the back of the dress. So from there, I will sew the two shoulder back shoulder seams. Trying to get it, make sure you guys can see what I'm sewing here. All right, so there's one shoulder. And we know on when we have the raglan style, really we have to sew four shoulder seams to fully get the sleeves in place. So here's now the back of the dress with the two sleeves attached and you can see the flutter on the ends of both of them. And now we will want to turn it and place the right sides together with the front of the dress, which is this piece that we worked on earlier. Okay, so we will Okay, so you may notice that often I sew um, the neckline. Actually, I was just thinking, you wouldn't even have to put a hood on this. You could totally make this hoodless and it'd be cute, but I, I think hoods are cute. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep adding it on. Um, but often I will sew the neckline with an open... Um, I'll sew the neckband with an open neckline, right? I don't complete this circle here until I've already added the neckband. Well, we're going to add the hood and we kind of just sew that and the band all in one step. So for today, I will be sewing the neckband in the round, which is not my preferred method, but is how I'm going to do it for this um, dress to achieve the neckband and the hood attachment all in one step. So. I'll show you that in just a minute. Um, yes, the hood is fun, and I would say my daughter actually very rarely puts the hood up, but she still loves it, and I think it's a really cute little look, even when it's just hanging down on your back. Plus, like this, when I'm using two different colors of fabric, it just adds a little more detail um, to the dress, and you can kind of play with the coordinating fabrics and the different pieces. So this has definitely been a favorite sewing pattern of mine and I sew one for rows every winter and um, this is the first time I'm making a summery one with the short sleeves. So I'm super excited to have Kind of another version of this dress okay so here is it's in a circle and it looks cute i did make my shirt this is the women's raglan which is another free pattern that you can grab oh this looks so cute all right so you can see on the side here we have an open side seam so i'm going to head going to go ahead and sew that and you will notice when you're matching the side seam, that this gathered pleat, ooh, that's bright, this gathered pleat we put matches up with the back yoke when you're doing the side seam. And that completes that sort of detail along the side. 
So that's um, one place you wanna make sure that it matches up um, when you're sewing down. And it should, it's, it's always matched easily for me. So I'm gonna start at the end of the sleeve and sew down the side seam. And then sew down the side of the skirt. And normally, you wouldn't have this band on the bottom. So like I said, I'm trying to add here four inches. So I do wanna make sure that those match up too. And then I have to see about what I'm gonna do about the hem. I haven't really decided if I want to hem it or what I want to what I want to do so I'm going to think think through that piece of this all right so there's one side seam sewn up I'm going to go ahead and do the other side seam and then we'll add the hood and the neckband, and I'll, we'll take a look at what the hem looks like, see if I can make any decisions, or I need to try it on my daughter after school before I can decide what to do with it. I'm not sure, I haven't really held it up to see how it looks with, that, with the band on it. We'll get the full view here after we sew these side seams. And let's see, this one I had extra fabric on the band. You can see how it's hanging off the side. So I'll definitely need to trim that up as well. This dress has a bit of a high-low effect, meaning the back of the skirt is quite a bit longer than the front. So don't worry, that's the way it's supposed to be. All right, let's turn this right side out. I need to finish those serger um, seams on the ends of the sleeves, but I also wanna check out how the bottom looks as well. So you can see here, so see how the back is longer than the front, totally how it's supposed to be. And it looks really cute. It looks really cute without, even without, um, the hood, it actually looks pretty big. So this is the six. I thought this was the size I made um, for my daughter in the fall and she's wearing it and it looks really great, but I'm wondering if I cut like the six length and a more narrow, maybe not the six width, because she is tiny but tall. Um, so we'll see, too big. Can always save it for next summer. <laughs> too big is better than too small for sure or we just give it away and uh, make another one but we'll see maybe it's the flutter sleeves making it look wider i'm not sure all right so i'm finishing the serger edges ed bleh, threads on the edges of the sleeves okay so, yeah, a belt would be cute too, although it might have to be high because of, you know, these little gathers. So, but we'll see. As, as long as it flows, ni flows nicely, um, I'm not worried about it being loose. Is that better than too tight? Um, okay, so now we have the neckband and the hood. So I'm going to cut these threads around the top of the pattern and I have my neck band I had to piece it <laughs> again using up scrap fabric and I had more of the pink but I really wanted a green neck band 
between the pink um, front and the pink um, hood, okay? So what I want to do now is I want to measure an approximate uh, length of this waistband so that I can sew it into the circle. So um, you can do that a couple of ways. You can measure around the circumference of the neck and then I like to take about 85% of that and cut the neckband that length. Um, or I'm just going to um, stretch it slightly as I'm going around here, like I would if I was just doing it by feel for the sewing and sew it or uh, stretch around to get a length. So you can do it either way. I'm assuming that my stretching here will result in approximately the same 80%. And I'm super bummed because I'm just going to need just a little bit of this extension that I added. So I'll probably put that double seam in the back of the dress so it'll be under the hood. But... All right, so now we want to, with right sides together, sew our neckband into a circle. Okay, so there's my two seams, unfortunately. I don't love that, but it's what I have. And this time I know exactly where the center of the back is because it has a seam down it. Um, because of that fabric that I'm reusing. Normally it doesn't, um, but this time it does. Okay, so I want to first put on the neck band. So I'm folding it in half with the wrong sides in. And we're going to find the front or the back center and then the front center and clip those in place. Okay, and then the rest of the neckband will be stretched around. And um, let me get the neckband actually all the way clipped around because we're going to put the hood on here as well. So, and then we just sew it all on together. Um, but neckband, let's see, neckband first, yeah, and the hood's under the neckband. I have to kind of picture it in my head to make sure I'm sewing this in the correct order because I'm not looking at my instructions. <laughs> and we all know I've totally gotten distracted and sewn things wrong before. So if you did see my live yesterday, I made really cute, and I can show you at the end. I have them sitting right here because I haven't. Still haven't put the elastic in. Um, leggings or a skirt with leggings attached underneath, you know, kind of like a little little sports skirt. And um, my first hem of one of the legs was just a disaster. I think it might have been I had the wrong needle. I don't know. The machine was eating my fabric. <laughs> so, yeah, things go wrong. Things go wrong for me for sure. All right, so there's the neckband pinned on. And now we're going to pin in that same place the hood with right sides together so that when you wear the hood, it's up. Oh, but before I do that, I need to hem it. I need to hem it. Okay, so trying to think I don't again I don't have my cover stitch I don't really want to put um, a double needle back on here but I probably also should change to a lighter color because I have this green on so let me go ahead and put a light pink Where'd that bobbin just go? Okay, put some light pink on. So that hopefully my hem won't stand out like a sore thumb. 
and I'm probably just going to zigzag. We want it stretchy because it's knit fabric, so you want to use a knit stitch or a zigzag or a double needle or a cover stitch. Any of those methods work for hemming um, your knit stretch fabric. Uh, but I'm, I think I just want to keep it simple and do a zigzag. So I'm going to fold over about a half inch hem, put it on zigzag. Now remember I uh, modified my zigzag, um, so I'm going to go back to the original settings of the zigzag uh, as I hem this. And I want to sew right on the fold, but I'm also sewing on the right side of the fabric so that I can make sure it is laying nicely. And because I put pink on the top and white on the bottom, so if I sewed on the other side, my white would be, the bobbin thread which would be here on the top. And I don't really, really want that. So I should have put pink on the bobbin and then I could have gone ahead and flipped it over and sewn on the other side. But this works too. And like I was saying yesterday when I was doing the other thing, you can also use some of the fun um, decorative stitches on your machine, depending on which machine you have. There's the honeycomb stitches or the X stitches um, that are essentially just fancier ways of zigzagging and they all have good stretch in them. So it's kind of a fun way to do some of these hems if you're without a cover stitch or um, just want a little variety. So there is the hem around the hood. Okay, so it looks like it needs a little bit of a press, um, but it'll, it'll flatten out. All right, now we're gonna take the back center line of the hood and match it up with the back center of the dress. And we're, then we're just going to follow the neckline around. And I'm gonna put in a few more clips because now we have four layers of fabric. So we have the dress, we have the two layers of neckband, and now we have the hood. And we're going to work our way around to the front. Depending on, um, if you made a lined hood, your hood will be a little bit longer, but I will say this hood will not, it will, does not meet in the front. It stops about here, okay? So um, it's not an oversized hood that does come all the way around. So you'd have to edit the hood pattern if that is what you're looking for. You might be able to use the hood add-on free pattern that I have. Um, that's a little bit more of an oversized hood. I would say this one is a little bit more fitted um, when you're putting it on. Okay, so you can see the hood pinned and came just past those front shoulder seams on the raglan, okay? So now we can go ahead and sew all that mess together. Again, I'm going to go slow to make sure that I have all four of those layers lined up. And I will be tugging gently as I'm sewing to make sure that the neckband is being stretched to fit well. Okay, so we're sewing that around. This is attached. If you don't want to sew all these layers, go ahead and, you know, based on the neckline or the neckband, and then you can add the hood in a second step. I just don't want a lot of bulk with multiple seams. So I would definitely tack the neckband on, not with my serger, because that's a bulkier seam. Maybe just in a couple spots with your sewing machine or 
all the way around just for the temporary stitch. Okay, so now we can flip up the neckband and see there is, oh goodness, I just noticed a, a hole in the back of my shoulder, what? Okay, so apparently, remember when I was talking about easing those curves together? Well, I didn't do a very good job with that curve, so let's, that's gonna bug me, let's fix that. So then I can hold this up and we can really take a look at how it, you know, one curve goes one way and the other curve goes the other way. If you're not paying attention, sometimes they don't get sewn together. Okay, so let me back up just a tiny bit here so you can really get the full effect. Okay, so there's the neck band and then the front of the hood, but if I lift the hood up, there's the back, so we can see the back of the dress, the sleeves, the hood, and then if you, you know, there's the hood hanging down. And this is where a lined hood, like if I had um, enough green fabric to cut another hood, I would have made a lined hood, so, because I think it's so cute when it's hanging down the back and it has, you know, a cute fabric on the inside too. But this will do just fine. And then there's the front. So we have the front neckline, the sleeves, and it looks like it's plenty long. So I will have to try it on her and see. And if it's too long, I might actually shorten this a little bit before I hem it. So I am, I think, gonna wait to hem it till after school and then add that on. So for now, we will end here and um, check out that free sewing pattern and you can grab it for yourself and sew it. It's in, like I said, in sizes um, 12 months through 14 years. So you have a huge range of sizes to check out. And then here's the cute little um, skirt with the leggings underneath that I sewed yesterday. And um, it's really fun too. Gertrude, that's a great idea. And that would be so easy too, rather than having to fold it over, um, just make that little lettuce hem. So I'm gonna try it on her, just check the length to make sure I don't wanna trim it down, and then that's probably a great idea um, to add on to there. So I will post the finished photos of this dress in um, my short sleeve version post on Friday, and um, you can check that out then. And until then, have a great rest of your week. Sew something fun and show me what you're sewing. So if you're not part of my Life So Savory Pattern Group, you can find it by searching Life So Savory Pattern Group on Facebook. And it's a great place to show off all the things that you're working on, ask questions, and um, just be part of a fun sewing community. So you can get it, go ahead and search for that. And I'm so happy you guys joined me today. And I'll be back next week with another sewing tutorial of something fun. So we'll see you then. Bye.